start off first. This is not hate speech. This is not a message of hate. This is a message from the Word of God, the King James Bible. It is those that will lie to you are those that are the haters. What I'm going to teach the subject about sodomites, homosexuals, lesbians, is based upon the Word of God. It is not my thoughts. It is God's thoughts. And we're doing this early because I have a prior engagement tonight. So, if you disagree with me, you disagree with the Word of God. I'm putting this thing out there because if you've got a spineless jellyfish means, I'm going to quote from you the scriptures. And you can open up your King James. Don't you dare get another Bible. If you don't have a King James Bible, you go online and type up King James 1611 online Bible. Because you've got to get the truth by having the truth of the Word of God. If you don't have the proper Word of God, you don't have the truth. And what you want to say from me after this message, go ahead. They hated Jesus. They hated Paul. They hated Peter. And I would be in good company. Now the very first thing I'm going to tell you about sodomites. Is I have witnessed the sodomites. And the first thing they come up to. You know, what does the Bible say about me being gay? I'll say to them. The Bible says. That thou shalt not steal. Let's get to the primary basic sins of all man. And let's put sodomy and being gay. Let, let's put that on the back burner. Let's talk about sins that you and I have done. Have you ever stolen anything? You have? So Listen, I used to shoplift. And I don't bang on them, and I don't Oh, you're a son of my... Uh, 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 no. And when you do that kind of witnessing, you know what? Even if they are gay or whatever, that doesn't come up any longer if you're rightfully dealing with somebody. But this subject is to show you from the Bible what God says about the sodomites. Because the, the fake news of the media is lying to you. And they'll fake. You know, the people they put on the screens are like, how do you know they're not actors? I've known a few men and women who are sodomites. And I have read books about sodomy and all that. It's a very vicious, disgusting, sexual uh, movement that the media won't dare tell you what goes on behind closed doors. And a person can be saved, and a person can repent, and a person can be saved out of being a homosexual. There is victory in Jesus. I know there's some Christians and some ministries and some churches out there, Yo, you're a son of a, you're going to go to hell, you're going to go to hell. No, if you do it right, maybe they'll get saved and go to heaven. And the sins we put under the blood. Now we're going to look at first Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, it's in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostles, Romans. Romans is written by Paul to Christians. In Romans 1, 26 and 27, I'll read the two verses, then we'll go back. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their own burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. Now going back to verse twenty six. 
For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Vile, in Webster's 1828, we never do the Greek here. In Webster's 1828 dictionary, vile, morally base, impure, sinful, depraved by sin, wicked, hateful in the sight of God. And then affections is desire, feelings, tendency, good or evil, as virtuous. In more of a particular sense, a settled goodwill, love or zealous attachment, as the affection of a parent for his child. So already when we look at this, we have a vile affection. We have affections that, you know, feelings, what we want, what we desire, what we crave, has been depraved, has been wicked, and it's hateful in the sight of God. For even their women did change their natural use. The women change the natural use. What's the natural use of a woman? She's to be a wife. She's to be a mother. She's to be a grandmother. That's the natural use. And change the natural use into that which is against nature. What is the against nature of a woman? Full-time workers. God never attended a woman to be a full-time work. Except for at the home. Against the nature of a woman is for her to be independent. A separated woman. Lesbians are against the nature of of a woman. Abortion is against the nature of a woman. A woman of no virtue or lazy is against her natural nature. And then we go on to verse number 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, Natural use of a man and a woman is a man is to fall in love with a woman and they court each other, then they get married, and then you have the marriage bed. Now, I have been married twice. I'm looking to be married again. I tell you, the marriage bed between a male, me, and a female, my wives, who have died and gone off to glory, was wonderful, great, and I would have nothing else but to have another female wife. I would not ever want to have a male. It's disgusting. God made male and a female the marriage bed. He made it enjoyable. It's exciting. But it says, burn in their own, burn in their lust, one toward another. Men with men working, which is unseemly, that's the gay and homosexuals. It's a man having sex with another man. God said unseemly. The Holy Spirit, Paul said unseemly. And Webster's 1828 is not fit or becoming, uncomely, unbecoming, indecent, not fit. If I can be cruel for a moment, let me be cruel. I have been involved in pipe fitting and plumbing. There's a male and a female fitting for a male for a, for a pipe. If you got two male fittings for a pipe and you put them together, you got a leak. If you put two female connections of a pipe, you got a leak. But when you take a male pipe and a, and a female pipe and you put them together and you got a flow. If I and, and unseemly it's not fit, let me be let me just say it, okay? A male penis is made to fit a female vagina when they're married. Okay? 
I won't tell you, and I'll leave it to your own imagination, what male penis is between a male and a male. It's disgusting, and it's never what God intended. Two, two lesbians can't make children. Two homosexuals can't make children. But a male and a female together can make children. That's God's way. Now go back to Romans 126 again. For this cause God gave them up. God gave them up. God gave up sinner. Unto vile affections. And we looked up those definitions. The sodomite LGBT movement are people that God has turned over. And gave them up unto a morally base, unpure, sinful, deprived by sin, a wicked, hateful sight of God's desire. So they get their banners, say, God loves us too, and if a religion takes them in, God and the Bible do not, does not, approve of the sodomy homosexuals lesbians bisexual and transgender population they are enemies of God Romans 132 who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death and not only do the same but have pleasure in them, and that they do them. Knowing the judgment of God, they've heard the preaching, they've heard the message. They have seen the natural and unnatural disasters. Today they see the, the volcano, they hear the earthquake, they, they, they're, they're functioned by the, the hurricane, and COVID-19, and the Delta virus, and over and over and over and you cannot possibly in a right mind to say it's evolution there are buildings collapsing all over the world and they're saying it's global warming it cannot be global warming it is the judgment of god upon sin there's misery and death because of sin and they which commit such things are worthy of death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. In their sin of sodomy. In their sin of lying. In their sin of disobeying their parents. In the sin of adultery. In the sin of fornication. In the sin of rebelling against the word of God. There is death. Sodomites are not the only sinners in the world. There are tons more of sins that men do. They cheat, they lie, they see. They... And then again, sodomites are a sin that God can forgive you. You can be washed of your sin of sodomy. Again, I know there's some churches out there, oh, we'll allow some, and we love you, and God loves you, and bleh. No, they don't. You don't know what the Bible is. Shut up. Go get another career. And then there are people out there, oh, God's going to fry you in hell because you're a somebody. God's going to burn you in hell for all eternity. Now, if they turn and repent and get right and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, Sodomites, the LGBT movement is sin. And their sin causes death by diseases and the events of sodomy. What they do, what they get, their actions. On a death certificate, there are sometimes, if it's unaltered, the death that puts on a, on a, on a death certificate for some of the sodomites is because of their sodomy. If it has been honest and filled out correctly. But the Bible says also, 
but have pleasure in them that do them. There are people who have pleasure in their sodomite sins. There are people who have pleasure in adultery. There are people who have pleasure in robbery. People who love to deceive others. People love to hurt and harm others. Sodomy is not the only sin in the world. And I've heard some pastors in the congregation, oh, we must have fun. Fun. Your fun, saved or lost, may bring judgment of death because your fun may be sin. Yes, even inside of a Baptist church or a Christian home, some fun is sin. And you enjoy doing it. And you know God doesn't approve of it. There are people who, who don't have money for bills, but they go out and they entertain themselves. The Bible says you've got to pay your bills. There are some people, their money is gone and they love gambling. Listen, the liars are the people who won't tell you the truth. Fun is not in the Bible word in the King James 16 and 11. Never mind what the NIV says. You can take the NIV and throw it in the garbage can in the flames of hell, a brimstone and fire. That's not the word of God. Now, First Kings. First Kings. Chapter 14. Verse 24. 1 Kings 14, 24. And there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to the, all the abominations of the nations which God cast out before the children of Israel. Sodomites. Again, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. One guilty of sodomy. Sodomy is a crime against nature. Webster's 1828, Romans chapter 1. The land here is the land of Israel. In God's holy land that he gave to the nation of Israel. Israel has allowed the Sodomites to live and build and be free. That we also see a word, we see the word called abomination. An abomination in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary is extreme hatred. Detest. And when we talk about the abomination, their idolatry is abomination to, of God. And the Roman Catholics are abomination with their idols and statues before God. And a male and a male in a relationship, in a sexual relationship, is an abomination before God. And a female, in a female, in a relationship, and having sex as female and female is an abomination of God. And transgenders, we'll talk about in a moment, is an abomination to God. And you can repent, and you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18. Verse 22. Leviticus 18, 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So when a male lies with a, another male. When he's supposed to lie with a female, 
Again, it's abomination. Two males together is an abomination. Two females together is an abomination. You're not gay. You ought to be miserable and rebelling against the Word of God. Again, in, in Leviticus 18.22, we see men lie with mankind, Romans 1.27, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust, one to another, man with man, working that which is unseemly. That's Leviticus 18.22. Paul backed up, and the law backed Paul. First Corinthians, First Corinthians six, nine. Know ye not? You're supposed to know this, Christian. Oh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of? God. Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Infeminate. Don't be deceived. Because if you're involved with these sins, you have been deceived. Somebody deceived you to thinking it's okay to be gay. You've been deceived. You are sinning against God. Infeminate, again, Webster's 1828, having the qualities of a female sex, soft and delicate, to the unmanly degree, tender, womanish. Number two, womanish, weak, resembling the practice or qualities of the sex. There are men who are gay or homosexual sodomites that try to act, that perform, that will even try to look like and speak like females. That's a perversion. That's being deceived. That's not who you are. You are a man. You are never to be a woman. You have been deceived by the media. You have been deceived by the educators. You have been deceived by the world. If God gave you a penis, you are a male. If God gave you a vagina, you are a female. There are no other sexes. And we'll look at that in a moment. And then today we're looking at Transgender. Men who think they're women and women who think they're men, that's infeminate. It's a sin. You've been deceived. When you are involved in the LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, you have been deceived by the world and by the devil. And if you think God approves of what you're doing and a religion says that God loves you, you have been truly deceived by God. You have been deceived by the devil, not by God. That was an error. You have been deceived by the devil, by the world, and by religion and man. God will never deceive you. Satan wanted me to make a little cross with the words there. Deceived. Adulterers are deceived. Fornicators are deceived. Idolaters are deceived. So don't think that sodomy and sodomites are the only wicked sin. No. A statue of Mary is just as wicked. Sleeping with another person that's not your spouse is just as wicked. Now, abusers of man, mankind, 
sexual abuse of the sodomites. They torture and have hard foreplay in their sexual perversion. They actually will burn themselves. They will bite themselves. They will eat disgusting things. They will all kinds of wicked and just torture for their sexual thrills. It will leave marks, it will leave scars, and it will bring death. I'm trying to be clean. But you can find the material out there if you really want to see the perversion of these people who call themselves gay. They're not gay. They're perverted. And then this brings death. There's the AIDS virus. Which AIDS was originally called GRID, Gay Related Immune Deficiency. But we had to change that because that offended the gay people. Sexual pra practices and sodomites are immortal abusers. Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female, plain and simple. Any other sexes behind, besides male and female, you're a fool. You have been deceived. And that's Jesus Christ recording that. Who is God? Who is part of our creation that he created us as the creator God? Jesus Christ, the son of God, had part with God the Father when they created all things. Both God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit had their equal parts in the creation, and the Creator says He made them male and female. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. Nevertheless, Paul writes to the Corinthians, to avoid fornication, that's a sin, at sex before a marriage, let every man have his own wife. Let every male have a wife. We just read there's a male and female. Only men and female. There's only male and a woman. There's no others. So let every man, every male have his own wife, a female. Or woman. And let every woman, a female... Have her own husband, a male, according to Jesus, Mark chapter 10, and various other places in the Bible. Nowhere are we commanded in the Bible to have a male and a male and a female and a female. That's an abomination. It is not approved by God. It is not approved by the word of God. It speaks highly against it. As does, well, I was born a male and I think I'm a female. It's a sin. It's a sin, it's a sin against God and it's a sin against the scriptures that you need to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And you can be saved from these sins. Get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, confess his sin, and forsake it. Leave it. Genesis. Genesis 19. 19. Verse 5. And they called unto Lot. Now what Lot had done... Two angels or two men have come into town. And it's getting close to the night. And Lot says unto the two men, Hey, come underneath my roof. Spend the night in my house. 
And then morning, go about your business. The angel, okay. So, Lot was a hotel or a motel or an inn. It was a place to bed for these two men. So they're called on the lot, the men of the city, the men of Sodom. Said unto where are the men which came in unto thee this night? He had two men come into his house. Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. How'd he do? Oh, nice to meet you. Nope. That's not the kind of no. The men of Sodom where Sodom he come from, came and demanded that we may know them. And in the Bible, one of the words of know means sexual relations. Matthew 1, 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Joseph did not know, did not knew his wife, know his wife, did not have no sexual relations with Mary, unto after Jesus was born. And then Mary produced other children. Genesis thirty-eight twenty-six. Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not Sheila, my son, and he knew her again no more. Judah had relations with a woman and when he found out it was his sister, his daughter-in-law, he didn't have any more sex with her. That we may know them in Genesis 19:5, the Sodom, the men of Sodom, the Sodomite saw those two men go into Lot's house, fresh meat, oh virgins, bring those men that we may know them. The men of Sodom wanted to have sex with the visiting men. Romans 1.27 Likewise also men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men. Here's a group of men wanting to have sex with two men. An orgy. First Corinthians six nine. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. They would abuse those two men all night. They abused Jephthah's daughter all night. They abused, uh, no, not Jephthah's daughter. Uh, The man that came into town with his wife, and they wanted to know him, and he gave his wife, and they abused her all night in the book of Judges. And when she came to the door, at the doorpost of the house, she was dead. They sexually abused her and sexually tortured her until she came to the threshold of the door and was dead. And her husband chopped her up in 12 pieces and mailed out her body parts. Leviticus 18.22 Thou shalt not lie with mankind as the women kind is an abomination. I know the law ain't in Genesis, but still. 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 23. Verse 7. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. Sodomites had their house and houses. In the land of Israel, God's land, they had houses of Sodomites. Where they would practice male and male, female and female, and the abominable sexual acts perverted abomination by God and there were houses in the land of Israel where God's people were and it was allowed and not only were there sexual dens of thievery and abominations and sodomy but the houses were also by the house of the Lord the temple 
And what's more wicked to the fact is that there are religions in America today, in the world today, that welcome sodomites, welcome lesbians, welcome the transgender, welcome the homosexuals, Welcome. God just loves you. We're just lying to you so much to make you feel good. No, you're a sinner under the wrath of God. It is a sin to be in sodomy, a lesbian, a homosexual. Yet the Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come down, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Your sin of sodomy and sexual perversion can be forgiven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. America's in the same spot that Judah was. The Sodomites had settled in, built their houses, and they are amongst the house of the Lord, and they are amongst the, the, the religion. And the falling God, small G O D S just loves you. And a man that speaks from the Bible, speaks the truth by the word of God from a King James Bible. Oh, it's hate literature. No, it's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So with that, verse 7, <clears throat> go over to 1 Kings. God commended his love to us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22. 46. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. Joseph, Jehoshaphat. Now, do you want a natural, national, national, godly revival? Do you want God to do a work in America, in the country that you're at today? You want to be set on fire by the Holy Ghost. You want God to bless your nation. One of many steps. One of many steps. This is not number one. There are many steps to revival in America or your country. One step, 2 Kings 23, 7, 1 Kings 22, 46. You got to remove the sodomites and LBGT. I didn't say kill them. You got to get them out of the land. You got to get them to confess their sins or leave. You got to get them right with Jesus Christ. You got to be born again, a new creature. You cannot accept sodomites and sodomy in your country and expect God to bless you. Don't you dare say God bless America when you allow the sodomy and sodomites. Don't you bear, dare say in God we trust when you allow abortions. No. You are deceived. Getting rid of abortions and getting rid of sodomy are one of two steps. Of many steps. If you want a revival in America. Another step is for we, ourselves, to forsake our sins. Because we're all sinners. You know what's killing America? You know what's killing the world? Sin. The wages of sin is death. And two sins of America of many is she allows abortion and she allows sodomy. Both of which, murder and sodomy, and she allows idolatry, 
three abominations in the Bible, and America allows it and promotes it and makes it legal. You're not going to have no godly revival when you've got three top abominations of God. You can forget it. And as I said, finally, to close, this is not hate. You got somebody who's involved, transgender, homosexuality, gay, lesbian, they don't know what sex they are. Treat them with respect. Deal with them as sinners. Now, like I said before, when I started. And all the times it happened to me, they'll come up to me. I'll have two girls holding hands and two guys necking. Yeah. What's God say about you know, gay people? And I said, well, no, stop. Are you going to listen to me? Or is this a comment? And, you know, you're going to go, no. And they stop and listen. I said, what about, have you ever told a lie? And they're anybody of character. And they're going to stay in the, well, yeah. And you put out, and you put your hand out to shake their hand to greet them. You know, I told lies. Let me ask you something. Listen, this is how I witness to him. Let me tell, let me ask you something. And then there's two of them. I, I try, you know, try to dress one individual each time. It's hard, but you can do it. And then you look at it and say, well, let me ask you one more thing. Either of you, two or more, are you the perfect child? I mean, you're how old? Oh, you're how old? Listen, I'm, I'm 53 years old. You were the perfect child to your mother and father. If you didn't have a mother or either father, I apologize to you right now. But if you had a mother and father, don't shake their heads. In, you were the most perfect child for those for, for your mother and father. Right? And if they got any character, to be like, no. I mean, are you trying to say that you stole it from your, your parents? Have you ever lied to your parents? Remember we talked about lying? You know, I didn't do it, Mom. Was it me? And then you go to the commandments, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Step away from the sodomite. The sodomy and being gay and homeless. Take away from that. There are other sins. And you realize what you listen. I wasn't a perfect child either. And I, my mom, if she's got any gray hairs and any misery in her life, I, I'm sorry. I, I gave it to her. I, I, we could sit down. We could sit down right now. I could tell you some horror stories I did to my mom. I'm sorry. But you know what the Bible calls that sin? You realize the wages of sin is death? You you have admitted that you've taken things and bring them over to Exodus 20. You have false witness and you're not that perfect child. Bring them over to Exodus 20 and say, you're a sinner before God and show them the wages of sin is death. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scripture, was buried and arose again. You've gone away from. And if they don't get saved, they walk away. Maybe you'd be able to give them a gospel tract. Say, listen, we started this conversation, you know, about being gay or les whoever you think, les lesbian. You know, their sins too, you know. You know, adultery is a sin. A man that steps outside of his wife for another woman. Adultery, that's a sin. We're all sinners. And you will walk out of that conversation 
And you don't, and they won't feel hated. Now, if you go in there, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. I've seen preachers like that. I've seen pre street preachers like that. You need to find something else to do. But if you deal with them like that, they're going to be like, that guy don't hate me. I, I may not agree with that guy, but that's what he says the Bible said. It's not a message of hate. The world wants you to think of the message of hate because the world is with the devil and the devil does not want you to get right with God. 